Right, so today I'm going to do a, a quick video to show you how to uh, design a query uh, in the query designer when using a temporary table. Um, now, normally the query designer doesn't like temporary tables, um, but I found a little uh, workaround to get this uh, to work. Um, and it's very helpful when you have uh, large complex queries. Um, so um, I'm using the Northwind example database here, um, which I think is from Microsoft. Um, the link for that will be below this video. Um, and I'm going to be using the orders table from that. So this just contains um, a list of orders, but um, all I'm going to be doing is joining the uh, order ID here back to our temporary table later on. So uh, let's just dock that back. Um, so basically all I've done here is I've declared a temporary table with an ID and a name column um, and then we insert into that table uh, with a couple of IDs here um, from this orders table um, and then I've just put test one and test two so normally if you are going to run this or write a select K statement for this um, you just do an inner join like so um, so if we run that now, that should return our two rows. Um, problem with this is, if you try and design this, it will have none of it. So um, to get this first of all to design, you need to put square brackets around this. Um, then if you design that, you will now get the query designer with this horrible effects join, which is absolutely useless um, when you're trying to work with large queries. Um, now I often use temporary tables with um, the output clause, which is a, a very helpful clause which turned up in 2008 or 2012, I think, um, which basically lets you get the IDs of multiple rows that you've inserted or updated. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's another video. If you just look on MSDN about that, um, if you would like us to do a video on that, but leave a message in the comments. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of put in a little workaround. Um, some may call this a bit of a bodge. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new derived table. And it appears that the, derive, that the query designer doesn't look into the derived table itself. So if we put select that from at 10, we can put whatever we want in here. Um, and it, oh, sorry. So we, we have to do put brackets around it while you're designing it. Um, now, you have our fake columns, but you can do what you want with them. Um, it doesn't really matter um, because it doesn't look inside the derived table. Now, um, we're going to actually rename this with our real columns. So we, we're using ID and name. And now we'll bin off our rubbish join here. Um, and we're going to do, we're going to join order ID to ID there. So now we've got a working join there. Um, so if we OK that, now, once it's been okayed, the the only problem with this is it will still not run. So what you need to do then is to take out the square brackets around that, and then it works. Now, I don't think it designs again, but if you need to design it again, then you just need to put the square brackets around it, and you should be good to go. So I hope that's helped you. Um, if you've got any questions, then leave them in the comments. If you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Um, it's been Ollie from Get Geek. Thanks.